All right, through the magic of video, it's probably been very little time for you at all. Uh, here's segment two of Phase Falls. We're going to dive right in. The, uh, the acrylic part, the gesso that I used and put on, so that's all dry to the touch. It's actually been, uh, oh, a handful of hours. I think it's 2 something, 2.30 maybe in the afternoon. Um, so I had a couple of appointments I mentioned in the first video, and, and here we are ready to keep going. So let me tell you what colors we've got laid out. Um, yellow ochre is trying to get away, so just keep an eye on that. <laughs> uh, there are a few yellow spots on my carpet in both studios here at home. But titanium white, I always like to take the knife and just give it a little drag. So it seats it down on the palette real well. It's ready to load any brush we're going to use. There's phthalo blue. Let's give that a tug. Move over, hit midnight black. Such a beautiful dark, dark purple. Um, a couple of things on the palette here as I'm going around and doing this. This is just freezer paper. So it's a freezer paper I ordered from a, a big restaurant supply place. I actually got a wheel of it. Um, I think it was over a thousand feet long for like, I don't know, $55 I think. Even got a little rack so it holds it on a shelf over there and I can tear it off real easy. Here's dark sienna. We'll have some rocks in this one. Here's Van Dyke Brown. Some sap green. Cad yellow, yellow ochre still trying to get away. Let's just take some of that oilier part, get rid of that, and just give it a little smush so we're ready to roll there. And then a little bright red to sign it when we're done. So, mentioned in the first video, we're going to put a little bit of liquid clear on this one. And I just leave liquid clear right in my jar. And this is why you open it before <laughs> you start recording. A little dry around the top, but oh, it takes so little to do this. Just take one of your one inch brushes, and I mean, just barely, 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 not nearly as much as you would if you were do doing liquid white. And then just put some dots around the canvas and do those little crisscross strokes to connect the dots. That's all you got to do. You just want it to barely, barely moisten the canvas. I like to carry these dots around as long as the brush will give them up because it's easier to connect them. And then I'll just start pulling in a little bit from the outside and start doing those crisscross strokes. And here, let me do it on the black part. I hope you can see that on the video. Boy, it really just gives it a dimension of life and shine and cool look. You just want this evenly distributed, and I mean you just barely want it moist. So you'll see as I work on these, these little dots are the wettest area. And don't mistake going fast for pushing hard. I'm not pushing hard, I am going fast. And I really am just using the tips of those brushes. Tip, tips of those bristles, rather, on this brush. And watch what it does to this tree. You can go vertically up a tree. Oh, it just makes it feel like it springs to life, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? I hope you think that's cool. You can scrub it back and forth if you need to. And as you go, you will work those wetter spots out. And oh, look how neat it makes those little rocks look. We haven't even made it look like water yet. Such a neat painting. I'm telling you, you can do this. You can have success with this. Get some of that moved around, do long, horizontal, and vertical strokes. Again, fast doesn't mean you gotta press hard. You're not gonna hurt the canvas, but I mean, there's just no benefit to pushing hard. You'll wear out your arm and your hand. I may put a little more up top just because I've got so much bare canvas here, but it is not gonna take much. If you're under some good light, you can also kind of sneak in a look from the side and just look for anywhere that it looks dry to you. So it did look dry in and around here a little bit, so I might pick up a little more. But let me try and just scrub it in there. You might knock your canvas out of your easel every now and then. That's happened to me plenty of times. You're not going to hurt it. All right, another good couple of tests. If you're putting liquid clear on, and you've seen me do the 
fingerprint test for liquid white, it's similar, but what you want to do is go like that, drag your fingers across it. You really shouldn't see any other than a little shine on your fingers, and you shouldn't see your finger, the lines of your fingers going through the liquid clear. If you see the line, the trails from your fingers, too much, too much, too much, too much. A way you can fix that, if you got any, you got too much anywhere, get a good paper towel, one that's not real cheap and going to lint on you. Put it against your canvas and paint this side of it. And you might have to do this a couple times, but what I would not do is drag this paper towel across it because you can see this is a decent paper towel and that even left a few little lint pieces, it looks like. And you just don't want to have those little pilled pieces of them. And I'm just going to, by adding a couple of drops, I mean a couple of drops, I am just barely, barely, barely going to touch that corner down in there and drag off the excess. And that is going to be all we need. We're just going to put a little bit of that around right here in some of these bare areas, just because the canvas will suck up a little bit more of it there. Awesome. We are good to go. Let's keep rolling. I'm super excited because I'm actually going to get to teach this one twice this week. And I had checked. I checked before. It's not the 26th. I think it's the 27th. Whatever. It's the Monday after Thanksgiving 2023. So don't know when you'll be watching this. It could be years from now, minutes from now. This video will be posted, I hope, next few days, so it's fresh and dated, but I get to teach this one tomorrow down at Recreation Plantation, one of the awesome RV resorts I've been working with and having so much fun. Wow, there's some talented painters there. They really have welcomed me in, and I just really appreciate that. And then on Friday, I'll be at one of the rec centers in the villages through the Enrichment Academy, and oh, what a treat to be working with. Melanie and her team through the Enrichment Academy. So I'm going to put the lid on my liquid clear. Don't need that anymore. I've wiped out the excess liquid clear that remained in the brush. Now I'm just going to pick up some phthalo blue and watch this guy go in so quickly. We're going to start up here in a corner because we do want it to stay darker. And what you'll notice, because we're using liquid clear, it is not going to blend our color is going to stay just as intense as we work around this because it doesn't mix like it would with liquid white if we were working on a regular canvas. And I obviously put more paint there so I can go back and pick some of it up and move some of it down. But I like to do this in a first pass so just as I'm running out of paint, it's just going to get lighter and lighter and lighter down here near the horizon. And look how it just sneaks that sky in right behind those trees. Isn't that amazing? I love that every time. So I know I'm going to want this a little bit darker. So I've just run out of blue there. Pick up a little bit more paint. Doesn't take much paint at all. Really all we're doing is putting a glaze. I've heard it described that way on the canvas by having liquid clear on it first and then adding color. And I still don't want one flat uniform color. So, so avoid doing that. I would recommend darker up in your corners, maybe a little darker down these sides, deeper in the woods. Less light would come at you from there, and it'll also just help brighten up everything we're doing here in the middle. There we go. Oh, that's nice. So I hope you're enjoying these videos, and you're painting along, and pause and rewinding, or I guess you don't have to rewind anymore, just slide, do the little slider bar and move it back to a spot you need to practice. If they're too long, too short, you'd like me to break them up differently, I do welcome your comments. I mean, that's really the only way I'm going to know what's working for you and what's not. I'd love for you to start posting pictures of what you're doing. If you're painting along with me, boy, I'd love, I love it when people email or text me those. But I think it would really be helpful if you put those in the comments. So anybody who checks out the videos here on the site, they'll have the benefit of seeing those as well. So there, we've got our initial sky in there. We may, may take a look and darken some things up. One thing, if you see me keep looking down, I always wondered what Bob was looking at. And 
he would practice the painting he was going to do and work on it and get it to where he wanted it and then he would practice painting for 10 minutes so he was knew he was right on track when he was doing the one live on PBS for us. So I make myself a little cheat sheet, cheat sheet, I don't think it's cheating at all, my notes. So I just have just little reminders so I don't forget because the sequence is so so important just to build from the furthest away to the closest up. So we've done the sky with the blue, I've reloaded with blue, we're gonna have our waterfall come down. I like to do this horizontally. It doesn't make much difference, but it just sort of makes me start thinking about the water. And I want to have a pretty big waterfall, so I'm going to have it come crashing down pretty far. Watch what happens to these rocks. This gray part that we put in there first with the gesso, and then when we put uh, some blue color on it so it's ready to turn into water when we add some light, but just with the blue. Well, look at this. Oh, I hope you can see that happen. I can't, I can't see the viewfinder on the camera while I'm doing this, but oh man, just adding the blue over the top with that liquid clear underneath. It is like magic. Oh, I love this one every single time it happens. And we're going to figure out our shore and where our bushes are and where our rocky things are and any splashy splashes that are happening. So we just wanted some color down here to work with. I'm going to go ahead and put some blue further up. Yeah, let's make it a little darker too. I kind of like that blue when it gets real dark like that. Because I'm not, I decided not to use any uh, phthalo green, so I'm not going to make any of this kind of an emerald color. But I'm also not trying to make it one flat uniform color, because seldom does water in motion ever look like one uniform color. Maybe if you had very still water, but even so, out in the woods, very still water different light, different shadows, all kinds of different things. So we'll just put some blue out here in the dark in case we make some of this water out here on the sides. That way it's already good and dark. Some of these lighter areas, we just want some color there so it's ready for us. There we go. Can you believe that? You think we ought to make that a little darker? Let me step behind this and check it out from the uh, camera side. And uh, boy, I like what we got going, so ain't broke, let's not fix it. So we've done our phthalo blue in the sky and where our rocks are and kind of all in the dark area. Now we are going to put a waterfall in, but we need to do something else first. So our waterfall is going to come from here and you got to practice that uh, falling sound. It's Something like that. It, it, it won't work for you if you don't do that. So I would very, very much encourage you to do the sound effects. But we need to do the rock that's going to hold it, that it's going to be in front of, but basically is holding up all of this. So let's just take some brown. We'll take some dark sienna. Kind of smush those together. Do we have another color mixed in there? Van Dyke brown, dark sienna. So it's just a, a reddish, because dark sienna is kind of reddish on the brown spectrum. So just smush them together. They don't need to be well mixed. Get our little roll of paint. So smush it out, cut across, and you got that little roll of paint out there on the edge of your knife. So then we'll highlight it. Uh, yeah. There we go. So let's just decide, hmm, let's have this back rock kind of come out here and just, just pull down, just pull down. We're not making the final rock here. We're just putting in the brown underneath color. So we've got something to highlight. So let it break. You want to have kind of a sharp edge out here. I like doing that. So our waterfall really comes crashing past something. Just scrape this down, almost like you're scraping off the extra snow on the bottom of a mountain. You know, when you're doing the base base color on a mountain, and we scrape, 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 scrape all that off. So just kind of pull that in. So now let's kind of highlight that, define our rock a little bit. So let's just take some white and just add it to a little bit of that color we were making. Let's add maybe just a whisper more the dark sienna. I like how it kind of makes it a little red and bright for a rock color. Add a 
a little more white. Just play with this color till you get something that you like. There's no right or wrong. If you don't like it, change it. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a flat top on this rock, so we'll just kind of pull, pull around to the side. Give a little wiggle in your hand. You just want this barely to pull, pull off like you're just kissing in the highlights of snow on a mountain. And then you can just ever so gently just pull, pull, pull. You may not even need any paint. I'm going to flip over and use the little side of my knife and just grab the edge of that and leave all these different shadows. We can play with this back and forth. We can come back in with some dark and we're going to have some foliage under here so don't worry about it. Don't worry at all. If you got a little color left, you want to kind of have it come down a little this way. Do that. That's cool. Whatever you like. Just play with it back and forth till you get it a result that you're happy with. Like this a little bright for me, so I'm just gonna sneak in just ever so lightly here and there, just to darken. I just, for, for the way I'm looking at this waterfall area and these dark woods, it just wouldn't be so, so bright. I like the kind of top flat edge we put on there to be a little bright. See how that just plays back and forth? Add a little dark in there. Just kind of softens it. And believe it or not, this little point is going to be important because our waterfall is going to come right past here and crash right down there. So if we want to mix up kind of a darker color. We could take some black, some phthalo blue, some dark sienna if you want. This is like a good rock color also when we need it for the other side. And I'll use a little on, on this closer side for you as we do that. Careful not to pollute your white, though. I do that from time to time. get a little frustrated with myself. I do like using a kind of a, a gray, watery look down here where I know it's going to be wet, where the water's going to be crashing by. So maybe we'll just sneak some of that in and, and just see what we think. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll just get a little bit down here, kind of setting us up to be ready for our waterfall and and splashies and all that sort of stuff. You don't have to do that one if that, that gray doesn't appeal to you at all. You may not be able to see it too well. Just want to give you some, some variation. No wrong way. And if you didn't like that, scrape, 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 do something right over it. No problem. All right, so now, now let's have some fun. As if we weren't having fun already. Going to move a little bit of titanium white over. This is going to be our splashiness of our... Uh, waterfall, we are going to take ever so slight amount, just a couple of drops on the corner. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. I mean, I just barely, nah, it's too close, isn't it? Just barely moistened the corner of that brush. So I can just go into some titanium white. I just want it to be a little bit thinner than how stiff titanium white is laying on the palette. Don't need tons of this. Just need a good, smooth, even coat. You can even sneak in a whisper, and you gotta be careful here, just a touch of phthalo blue. Just so it's not stark white. You still want it bright. You still want it to be very, very bright. So let's just make it super, super soft blue like that. Decide where your waterfall is going to come from. Have it come over and then go for it. Just go shh. See, you got to make the noise or it's not going to work. I kind of got a little hitch in my giddy up there, so let's do that again. You don't want to do it too many times, but I'm going to go over and shh, straight down. Come over and shh, straight down. Come over and shh, straight down. If you'll go gentle enough, you can do that a few times. Don't worry about any of this. We're going to put a nice big rocky thing here in a minute or two and have that uh, kind of held back there. So you'll pick up a little color. That's what happens. Not going to be a lot, but you can start right over a whisper, just a dot of liquid clear. And again, don't do this too many times, but I want it to come a little bit further down. So I'm just going to come across again and go straight down. See, because we can turn all that into foamy stuff. So that will be really, really fun. All right, let's take a clean one-inch brush. Still got to make
make sure there's no devil in it. It's not as fun to whack this one as it is the big two inch brush, but it's still fun. Let's just pounce at the bottom here and mist out some of the bottom of our waterfall. Just like we're doing mist in any other one of Bob's paintings. And this is just going to soften. You won't see much mist yet, but that's where our water's going to be splashy, splashy down into this water. <clears throat> and once you just knock the bottoms off a little bit, tap just a little bit, a tiny little bit. I'll try to hold it at an angle so you can see. Just a tiny little bit of liquid or uh, titanium white on the bottom here. Watch this. Just tap yourself in. Some splashy splashies. Barely touch. Barely touch. Kind of let it bend down. We're going to mist this out a little bit more in just a second. But you could have this. This mist could be kind of billowing down. It'll just help it feel like your, your uh, waterfall has really got some action to it. And leave some of those variations. It's almost like just putting a soft little cloud down here. Come back in and tap, tap, tappy, tap those little tap, tap marks away a little bit if you want to. You can kind of have it creeping up the sides here. Boy, this looks like it's a humid, humid waterfall in the woods somewhere. I like these little differences and variations there. So I'd suggest to you be careful if you get those to happen for you, keep them. Now, if you want to have a few brighter pops of white on there, just wipe out your brush, pick up a few little bristles worth of, of white, and just come put some a fresh layer on top. Don't have to be a lot. Doesn't have to be a lot. Oh, you get such value out of a little bit of misting like this. Oh, it's just terrific. Come back with a cleaned out brush. I just use the other side, the other corner rather. Just want to knock down some of that. And then... If this is where our water is going to be, we can just kind of knock the bottom of that mist out to give us an idea. Just go for it mostly horizontal here. And look how that pops that right back there. And it's just coming past the edge of our, our rock there. Let me peek through the viewfinder here and see if you can see that pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I think so. This part looks a little bright, so I'm going to knock this down. But we're going to have a lot of a lot of trees and bushes and highlights. So no, no, no worry, no worry. Let's do the rock to contain and hold back our waterfall just so it doesn't get all crazy and just run all over creation on us. Same brown. Just decide where it's going to be. It does need to be higher at some point over here than the water it's holding back. So you just come in front of it. Just pull it in like we did the other one. That's all you got to do. You don't need a lot of paint there. Have it scrape right down. We'll put a little mist in front of it here in just a minute. Maybe this is more of a, a rock slope over here. Don't worry, we're going to put some highlights on the rock. We're going to put some bushes and trees over it. We just need to put the dark color on there in the back. Dark goes on there first. Maybe we got another little flat edge that you could walk out. And if you're a crazy cliff diver kind of person, you could stand here and let your knees shake together a little bit and then jump right off of there if that was your thing. You would not catch me doing that. <laughs> not at all. Maybe this top part's a little rocks as well, sneaking through the woods. I don't know. Make these things up in your head. Just think about them. Have some fun. And fight that uniformity. This is a place that sometimes uniformity can get the better of you. You just want those highlights to look like rocks. And see, I don't know that we'd get this much highlight here, so let's just sneak in a little touch of dark. And no pressure here. No pressure on the knife at all. Just let the canvas grab what it wants from you and let, you, let it give you back the rest. It's not going to want all of it. It just is going to want some. Oh, but look how that changes the feel of that completely. Doesn't it? Uh, the thing on the top. We'll probably put a tree up there or something. I don't like my rocks to have too many straight edges. I just don't think that's how they look here. So there we go. We've got a little rock there. How about some mist? 
in front of that. I don't know about you, but I go through about a bajillion paper towels when I paint. Let's just kind of dress up that uh, little bit of mist and coming out of the front of this rock. Just a little. Doesn't take much to set that rock down in there. It just lets us know that we've got some good splashy, splashy, splashy happening from our waterfall there. Doesn't have to be all even because seldom our waterfalls that way. Let's kind of chop off some of the bottom there. Don't worry about that being all even because we'll, we'll dress that up a little bit. Just come back just to the corner, just the corner to soften that a bit. And who knows, we may cover some of that up as we get to going with our bushes and trees and highlights and such. All right, so we've got that. All right. We're gonna take and make a dark background color. I told you in the first video, we're gonna do some more trees. So we're just gonna take some midnight black some phthalo blue, and we don't need tons and tons of this, but we're going to throw some green in it so we start start putting the base in for some highlights. This is just going to give us a really nice dark, 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 dark color. And I'm just scraping those together here on a little workspace between my blue and my black. So that was just a little bit of blue, a little bit of black, and a little bit of green. Remember how to do this with your knife. Scrape it up so you pick all of that paint up. Smush it together. I see some people in class struggle with trying to stir paint like this. Very seldom does Bob ever stir it together. I think that's really just when he is in a crunch time and had a thought late. He can see the clock on the wall telling him it's about time to wrap up that painting for the day. So really, this knife works so well when you scrape it up, smush them together. But look how dark that is now. So I'm just going to use one of my uh, one inch brushes and I'm going to pull my brush through there, pull it through there a little bit on both sides. Not, don't get crazy deep on your paint here. You don't need to. You just want a nice load of paint and then push, push in there and you're going to start getting this ridge of paint leave, left behind on your palette. You're going to have the very same thing on that top edge where you pushed in with the bristles. And then just go in with that, leading that, that ridge of paint up, and just touch with the corner and let them bend. You're going to get some leafy looking things. They're going to have some color because you put some of that green in there. But mostly these will be good and dark. You can roll your hand the other way. And just play with the pressure in your hand. When you get comfortable with how it's coming off, you can use more and more of the brush. But you still want to lead mostly with just that corner. And again, we're just giving ourselves some stuff to highlight here in a few minutes. So think about each branch. Think about each little cluster of leaves. Don't just bang this in haphazardly and willy-nilly. That, that, that's not how a forest is put together. It's typically layer after layer after layer. There's overlap. There's some bare spots where you can see sky. So don't just go willy-nilly and smashing all over the place. Give it some thought. I think it's totally fine to go from side to side and back and forth, but just leave yourself some space. Because don't forget, this is just the dark color. We're coming back with highlights here in just a second and really gonna start building this. But you see how I'm just touching and letting it bend and look at how those just, you can kind of let it creep down a little Maybe this one creeps towards our little watery area here. Let these colors work for you. Do this. Take your time when you're doing this. Let, let this come to you. This is one of those things that it, it took me a while to get comfortable with this. And if you looked closely at that example I showed you of the painting I did at Faze up in Valdosta, the first one of these, man, it looks very flat to me in areas because... I just, I just got carried away and it's fun and it'll happen to you and, and just recognize it when it does. But come back and soften different areas, leave some areas open.
step back and look at what you got. If it's looking a little bit too uniform in certain places, we'll just come back in and get back to using just that corner. Darken your color if you need to. Change it up, lighten it in some places if you need to. You'll be able to overlap a few things here and there. Look how you can just change with just a little bit. I'd encourage you to use some speed as you go on this because that'll just help you. I want to add a little more black, so I'm going to go straight in there with my brush. I just want to vary the color. Totally cool to vary it right on your brush because as we're getting down here into the lower levels of our forest, well, it wouldn't be so bright, would it? Not quite as much light sneaking out as you run out of paint. It's a great time to come out and do the parts in the middle where we've got less paint already. But look how that worked out for us. Happy accidents are a real thing. I'd encourage you to leave some little open areas though. Leave some open so you can see the sky through it. It just helps that illusion of depth. Just need some dark in here so we've got some stuff to highlight. So in the darker areas, just I'm still not sliding though. Notice what I'm doing with my brush. I'm pushing and letting it bend. Yes, I'm going quickly. But there, that gives us the illusion there's some grassy, fieldy kind of things way back there. Don't forget, this isn't our highlights. This is our dark color so we can put some highlights on top. So let's bring these right down some of our rocky area. This will really help us seat those down in there. Don't be afraid to go over the edges of some of your different areas like that because that will really help you, again, create that depth. Let me take a step back and look. Take a look what we got through the viewfinder. I want a little more dark up here at the top so I can put in some beautiful highlights. Just kind of thickening up the canopy of these trees in some areas. Rounding a few off. Every now and then I get a little kind of straight across feeling to me with this brush doing that because I've pressed with the whole thing. So I just like to sneak in and kind of pull down at a little, not sliding, but I hope that kind of comes through where you can kind of see the, the curve thought there. Maybe we've got a little more dark needed over here in a few places just to say we're darker, darker, darker in the corner. If you're a Bill Alexander fan, that might be Daka, Daka, Daka. I love his videos too. Oh, he's amazing. If you haven't watched him, check out some Bill Alexander action. That'll fire you up. All right, so let's put some highlights on these jokers. Let's do a quick TV timeout for... It's good to have some of that base color in your brush when you're going to pick up and do some of the highlight colors because the yellows are already thinner than the dark colors. So having some dark, load the brush the same way, let all these streaky things happen. And I hope I'm not blocking the palette there, but push in there. You'll leave that ridge on your palette. That means you got a whole bunch of bright color there. Now just come in here and touch with that lead corner, touch and let it bend and see what you're getting. Ever so gently touch. Let the pressure in your hand vary. You can slide over and use the other corner if you need to. Move to another cluster of branches now. Light would come through this forest all different ways, but see the beauty of having that dark on the brush still, it lets all these colors feel related without being just one flat old dead color. Very, 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 the pressure in your hand. You're going to pick up some more dark from what we're touching there. So wipe out your brush as needed. Come back through. You can use both sides of the brush. Nice and smooth. And then push in. Push in so you get that ridge of paint. And now maybe we'll do a brighter one over here in the middle. And just kind of give it, give it some thought. Think, how would this receive light and go for it. Don't overthink this. 
let it be darker in the corner. Have your hand very. Leave some darker spots between. See, this is a brighter yellow than we started with initially. I like what's turning out here. Let's step back and take a look. Let's go in and wipe out our brush so we can reset with some groovy color. Let's see how those colors are looking on the old video. Yeah, I think you can see some of those. That's turning out okay. Let's go into some yellow ochre and really change up this yellow. Push in there so we get that ridge of paint. And now let's test it and see if we like what we get. I do. That's kind of a golden kind of yellow, but if you overlap these ever so slightly in a few places, it'll just look like trees have built this beautiful canopy. Still got to leave some of these dark. Got to leave some dark areas. Use just that corner. Use just that corner. One corner or the other. Push and let it bend gently. Practice this a few different ways. And oh, you just start building this amazing canopy in your forest. And if you want a little bit rounder feel, just kind of let it bend a little here and there. Let it overlap that one to its neighbor. Don't worry about it. Go for it. Oh, if you knew you couldn't make a mistake, what would you do? Do that, because you can't make a mistake doing this style of painting. Isn't that a great feeling? Kind of step that in. We may mix up our color. What if we pulled some of these yellows together? You can do that. Absolutely, you can do that. Let's get some brighter yellow there. And let it be all streaky. Let it mix on the brush for you. That is going to just also give you that great feeling of believability, depth. Ah, it just makes it so pretty. You don't have to highlight all of them because maybe there's that little dark recess area. Maybe that's Peapod's and Mrs. Peapod's little hiding spot where they like to cuddle when it's cold and have a little lunch break sandwich kind of thing. Cool. So that's working pretty good. Now we can check our notes. I don't want to skip anything. Individuals first. And you know, certainly we can kind of wipe out our brush a little. We could take ever so tiny. I really don't want to use liquid white, so I'm not going to yet. Let's just tap in some of these yellows. And let's change the shape down here near our lower area. So I've just loaded the brush by tapping it. And I'm just going to push and let it bend. So I get more of a flowery, grassy kind of feel in my touch and pull down. And we're going to come right down to the foot of our forest here. But see how that's just putting in that grassy layer? Now let's turn that sideways. And like Bob would do so often with the two inch brush to create soft velvety grassy fields, big fields, creating the lay of the land. That's all we're doing. We're going to have this come down. We're going to have this land keep coming right out here. So I'm going to probably stop this in just a second. But we can leave a little area. If it's too bright, just touch it again. Remember we put that dark on there? And this will just get softer, 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 softer. Maybe we'll put in a little greener layer right there for kind of a grassy feel. So just tap into some more. And then let's just start out here on our point and have it get a little closer to us. I got a little yellow in there and that's okay. But look how that just puts that ledge area right down in the painting. We'll do a few little stick things in there in just a second. And I just want to take off this sharp line here and there. So that just looks more tied together. Take a step back. Let's do our other side there. I'm going to pick up some of that darker yellow, the yellow ochre, because this just feels like it would be a little darker over here to me. And just tap and pull. This isn't that different than how we put the mist on just a little while ago. 
See, I've got some angle in my hand. Changing the pressure, but just touching and pulling down. And as I'm running out of color over here, it should be getting darker, darker, darker because it's way up here into the woods. See how it just sits the bottom of those trees right down in there and just gives everything a push right back. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Let's kind of put a little, maybe we get a little grassy overhang on this side of the rocks. It looks so humid and oh, what a great area to be growing if you're a plant. Wouldn't this be great? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Working out good. Now let's put ourselves some dirt down here. And then we're going to keep coming forward with our water. So let's go right back to our knife. Grab a little more brown so I can we can mix this up some. Let's grab some more uh, dark sienna in there. We can take a little bit of that white if we want it to be a little lighter and redder. See how that's all streaky? Just grab that little roll of paint. It can be a decent size if you need it to be. But let's just have it come out. Oh, I don't know where land is out here. What do you think? How, how about we just put in some land that comes out this way? And maybe it just gets a little smaller as it gets away from us that way. We'll kind of soften that slope just a little. And again, this is just some color. So we got something to highlight while we're doing the dark. Let's do the other side. These do not have to be level to each other because whatever our vantage point is where we're standing would certainly change how this looks to us far away. Let's put a little highlight on those. Just a little, just barely touch. See how close my knuckles are? The whole handle is to the canvas. You just want to touch, just barely touch. Let the canvas grab what it wants from you. And just whisper, just whisper. That first one got a little too much, so I'm going to wipe off my knife with a clean knife. I'm just going to touch it again so it kind of softens out there. And that was just too bright for me. Cool, that worked. Let's do it the same thing going the other way. Start out here and just pull it in. Barely let it, barely let it kiss. You just want it to look like sand or dirt. Be very careful if you go back over it again. Don't worry about this water side edge. Don't worry about the top edge. We're about to plant that all that down in there together. So let's uh, pick up a little more dark. So we've got some good stuff to highlight down here and really set that other stuff back there in the back. Just giving us something to highlight. Just something to highlight. You can have it grow down this way. You kind of want it to be a hangy kind of thing. Leave yourself some dark areas. Wipe out that dark. Now we'll pick up some of that yellow. I like the bright yellows on these grasses down here. Just sort of changes the flavor. Just the corner. Come down and get some on your sand. As you get comfortable, use more and more of the brush. There's no really necessarily a wrong way. I'm going to share with you the ways I've been taught and that have practiced and that are working for me. You, my suggestion would be try it this way, but don't be scared to give it your own little variation. Certain brushes will feel better in your hand. Certain things will just work better for you. You'll enjoy certain things more. And that's why I believe Bob would always say there's no wrong way. And do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. All right, we need some trees in there, don't you think? We need some trees. We need something. Something, something, something down here. So, what are we going to do that with? How about we do that with our script liner brush? I'm going to pick up just a little bit of liquid clear so I can thin down some of this brown that we were using to do the land. So it's already got some oh, white and dark sienna in it. And I just want it to be a good deal thinner than the paint that we've got up there already. I could use paint thinner, but paint thinner is all the way over there. So I don't really have any with me. 
let's put in a little uh, oh, a little stick thing and just let your hand kind of dance and pull and just sometimes these will look like little antlers sticking out of the woods maybe it is who knows just adds another little dimension another layer maybe 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 you got some roots growing out of the side of the any little subtle thing you can spend all the time you want putting trees and bushes and different things in here maybe one comes out this way why not sometimes you get them looking like pitchforks you can just come in and pull a few a few more limbs in that's fine you put one in front of something else and it just has a magical way of shoving it the thing behind it back and just gives you a little more depth. Maybe you just got some kind of near-death branches and such hanging down here. Actually, I'm going to go with less is more there. Maybe we'll, we might do, I don't know, maybe we'll drop a big tree in here in a second to kind of finish off each side a little bit. But uh, at this point, I'm not really feeling like we need that. So let's jump right back into our fan brush with some liquid white and really beauty up this... Uh, water area here because that's really such a big attraction point for everybody who has done this painting with me. I told you there'd be no editing and I forgot to get my liquid white ready. We'll still cut in a little shoreline and waterline on that so I just need to mix some of that up. I just used the end of my script liner brush to do that but let's do fan brush first to get water coming at us from the Waterfall. Dun, dun, dun. So let's start mostly white, because remember, we put um, blue on there. So there's already blue underneath the water to pick up. So let's get most of that blue out of our fan brush. Let's scrape this blue out of the way. Get comfortable with this knife. Practice scraping and smushing and moving paint around. Because if you can keep yourself a clean little work area, especially on things like white, because you just don't want to pollute it all. You want to be able to have clean, bright white. And now very, very gently, very gently, just decide and start having some motion in your water. We're going to come back with a clean brush and soften this. But watch, 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 watch as this gets closer to us. See, we can come back here. Let me do that first. And just decide where our water is starting to be more visible from the waterfall. I don't do all of this. You need some of that variation. Pick up some clean white. You can even push in a little bit of splashies as it's coming out of the waterfall area and then just grab the bottom of them and scrub them out a little bit. Let me kind of get some, some thicker ground covered here so you can see what I'm talking about. We're gonna come in and like I said, clean up the shoreline. But oh, watch this. Let's get wider, wider, wider as you get closer to you. And how awesome do those rocks look now? Let's come back in with a clean, dry fan brush. Just I want to soften some of that down. So super gentle. Don't mistake fast for rough. Fast strokes. Just softening. Just softening. If you keep softening too much, it'll just fade away and all go away on you. And that's okay, because you can put it right back in there. That blue is so powerful. You will have learned, and you will not have damaged. So that's totally fine. Let's do something crazy. I just saw something happen in there. And Bob's right. You will start seeing things. And this is on a clear, sober brain. So no, it's nothing to do with that. What if our water is splashy, splashy over something here? What if it's just been coming along right here and then it just goes whoops, whoops, and falls right over, whoops, and just keeps on a little splashy, splashy, a little splashy, splashy. Doesn't have to be huge, just kind of subtle, and then come right over there. Oh, is that fun or is that fun? Do you want to soften that a little bit? Okay. 
Maybe it's just a little variation in how this river is flowing. Maybe it keeps coming, maybe it keeps coming, and then it goes, whoops, damn it, did it again, whoops, whoops, ran out of white. Keep that white clean and it'll be there ready to go for you. So then it's coming along this way and just straight over, straight over. I didn't do that one very well for you, but you get the idea, I hope. But doesn't that look like that's got all kinds of little depth now? Little splashies here and there. You can scrub these out however you want. Maybe you got another little. Oh, I've almost gobbled up all my white. I may have to grab some more because this is so fun. Maybe it just whew, comes right over that little rock there, too. You get a few little splashies. Maybe it comes. Whew, whew, whew. So see how you can just change your mind and you can see these things and they just work for you? Yeah, I don't think we're putting big trees on the front of this. I am enjoying that. So, let's clean up this uh, waterline area. Take just a little liquid white. This is just like we were doing a, a waterline on, oh, a distant shoreline on a lake. Keep these horizontal, even as you come down the edge of your shore. But see how you can let some of that liquid white Grab into some of that brown, and it just looks like the edge is married right up to your water now. I like using the short edge of my knife, as you can see, and I don't want to do the whole shoreline at the same strength. I'm not going to use the same amount of paint. I'm just going to use a little bit here and there, and then come back again here and there where I feel like it should be and look just the knife gives a little different feel when you put a little white on it just kind of can give you a different and play with this this will be more sparkly like it's catching just some light zinging through those trees maybe you can go over it a few times it'll pick up some of that blue underneath and you can leave that to any degree of doneness that you want don't forget to go over and do the other side Start furthest away, get it going, add a little bit at a time, and you can do as much of this really as you want to. It's harder to take liquid white off of a black gessoed canvas, because it doesn't just soak it up like it does if you had put liquid white on this canvas first. That's why you just start with a little bit, and I put a lot there on purpose, I'm going to show you how to clean that up and do something with it if you don't like what, what the result was. Let me show you, just keep on scrubbing. Remember we put blue down there early, early on. So let's just kind of keep scrubbing. You can pull some of that out. You can do that. Let's change it up though. Grab my fan brush, grab a little more white. What if this is just a little splashy area? And there's a little distant, almost rapids or something. See how you can just change the feel of that. If you don't like this one over here, this is one thing I really like doing. Just coming in and grabbing a little of that liquid white and give it just a little pull. I like the little dots it leaves. To me, it just looks like speckly light reflecting across water. Let's step back and take a look. I'm going to tell you that's a good example of phase falls, and I'm going to call it done. Well, how do we call it done? We are, oh darn it. <laughs> now I need, uh, now I got to get some paint in it. We'll, we'll try to use some of the brush conditioner and uh, cleaner. This doesn't really work as well as paint thinner does, but we'll go with it. Let's get all that brown and gook out of my yuckiness out of my script liner brush. I've just got some bright red. I like to sign my initials, which is also my fancy logo. So this ran about an hour. It's a little longer than I want my videos to be. But man, Phase Falls is a great one just to try some different things 
if you haven't tried some of these techniques before. I would really encourage you to play with the uh, black canvas. Oh man, they're just so much fun. So, so much fun. All right. Share your comments, share the works, you're, what you're doing. I'd love to see your paintings. You're welcome to email them to me. You can see uh, info at danwilcoxart.com. Just, you know, there's two L's in Wilcox or that won't make, make it to me. Thanks for checking out Phase Falls here on Progress Not Perfection. We'll see you next time.